and they're and now you're you're drawing and you're like oh i better do a, a good drawing and it's like oh but i only gave you 30 seconds you know and so uh, i think that part of it is like uh i like that part right you can have strong like feelings about something that is a delusion like a like something that's not real like it's not like a thing what you're really looking for is an emotional feeling from that stuff I, 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 I. Do you find yourself trying to be that for other people? I think so. I think it's also, it's just like a, it's a natural aspect, right? So um, I like to, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll do like a talk or, or something at like a, um, at like Lightbox or like um, uh, CTN or, uh, um, you know, Terminus was one that I just did recently. And like, and you, you do all these talks or I, I'll go back to my school occasionally will we'll help out with storyboarding. And uh, some people connect to it, some people don't. And so, um, you know, ultimately, you know, I think, you know, you can, when, when people are ready to hear it, they can hear it. And so some people are like, you know, some people like, <laughs> when you do this lecture, and you're like, you're like putting your heart out there and you're like doing awesome. And then you look down and there's like some people and they're like, dude, yeah that is amazing and then right next to them is someone like you know and so like you're like wow like that guy did not you know i did not read for that guy but i do for this person right so like you but and so when you get those people it's kind of like you just keep talking and and you kind of like see like kind of what happens organically that like fits you know some people you meet it's just like everything like you meet people and and some people like really connect to you and it's really easy to like have rapport with them and it's just fun and they and they kind of get you and some people it's kind of like a little stilted uh you know uh, it can still be good but you know like it's just uh it's up to them if they still kind of want to like like connect it's a, it's a back and forth right like you can't i can't go into a place and be like i'm gonna mentor you you know uh and uh you can't really go up to someone and be like i want you to mentor me you know like you have to it's it's like a natural thing and so it depends. Like, do you want it to happen? Do you not want it to happen? Like, like it's fluid, I feel. Yeah, for sure. Especially, like, that reminds me of when we could go outside and, like, you know, at Lightbox <laughs> and, like, those animation conventions. Yeah. Networking, or at least yeah. the way people go around it, is so weird. <laughs> it's very strange. And it's, uh, you have to repeat yourself, like, a million times yeah. and stuff like that. Because a lot of times you're just really saying, you're like, you're introducing yourself to people and so that's just kind of hi how are you how are you and of course it's like ridiculous like you know sometimes you want to talk to someone and there's like six people waiting to talk to them so you're trying to have this kind of like nice connection with someone while there's like six other people like like waiting to talk to them yeah I and know. uh and it's just it, it's very awkward but uh if you can push back past some of that awkwardness you know that i think like it's it's very beneficial because if you are on people's radar, you just start talking to people, you know, you just end up like, that's how you kind of now, like you'll all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, this person's my friend. You know what I mean? Like we're best friends. Holy crap. You know, like you, those, those things kind of happen, but they, you can't force them um, as much. I think, I mean, all you can really do is kind of like force those first steps where you like introduce yourself and you maybe show your portfolio and stuff like that. Um, uh, I think a lot of people feel really awkward in that situation. And so they don't want to be in that situation, right? They don't want people to come and show them stuff. Um, it doesn't really bother me uh, at all. You know, like I, I like looking at people's stuff and, and, and talking to them about it. Uh, but yeah, like, I mean, who knows? My feedback maybe is not for you. Like uh, it might not be right or it maybe it's totally right. Maybe we're, maybe we keep, you know, working together and checking in so there's definitely people that are kind of like that in my life that i talk to i'll i'll like reach out to you know some friends that uh you know watch films from the 1940s and we'll talk about some weird aspect of of filmmaking uh that was you know 
from the from the 40s and like film noir or something and be like oh this is so you know did you see this movie did you see this did you see this and uh we'll talk about that kind of stuff and and it's, it's usually like old instructors that like are into film or filmmaking and uh so we get to talk about like those aspects of that uh and then there's also like you know younger artists on instagram or uh something that we'll talk to and we'll just like have like a, a chat and they'll uh shoot me stuff or i you know uh uh, some of the interns that were interns at Pixar, like I still talk to them and, you know, like they're, oh, I want to show you my stuff. Okay, cool. And like, you know, we'll talk about it. Like, you know, all I can really kind of give is like my feedback. Right. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's really good, insightful advice. I definitely remember being, um, I kind of had like a head start in the networking stuff because, yeah. um, when I was 12, I wrote a book and I had to like go across the country and do like different author That's showcases right. and things. That's I right. failed. Yeah. I did, did exactly the wrong thing so many times. Oh yeah. <laughs> what what, what yeah. was the wrong thing? Uh, the thing of like how you said, like trying those artists that I really, really admired, this great comic book artist. Uh, uh, and I just like promoted my book to their face and like was like let's be friends but to be honest i was 12 so that's yeah. pretty much how friendships worked when yeah. you're 12. yeah but yeah stuff like that of you know not forcing a connection and um yeah i would also say some people are like that yes yeah, so, so there's so definitely there are some people that you can run up to being... and i'll be like i want to be friends with you and they're like i want to be friends with you done you know what i mean yeah so... it's a difference of like being genuine though people can definitely smell when you're not like when you're afraid when you're a little nervous when you're like yeah. yeah not doing it but what's very interesting is that that artist now like i talk to them they're cool yeah. it's like totally fine it's just there's some uh there's like a sort of learning curve that you have to force yourself to go through yes uh uh we talked about this recently with some friends uh uh what does sincerity mean and then what does authenticity mean Ooh, is there a difference and, uh, between the two? Oh yeah, I would say so. Um, I think, I think you can be sincere about something, uh, an aspect or an idea, um, or a feeling, uh, but I don't think by sincere, I mean, kind of like, um, yeah. Well, now you're going to catch me on video, not having a, a dictionary in front of me. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. We can cut it out, whichever. It's, <laughs> it's going to be like, this is, here for two down here is going to say, this is not the right definition for any of these words. Uh, but, you know, like, <laughs> this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, but uh, but it, will, it will say, you know, something like, um, you can be strongly, like, you can have strong, like, feelings about, something that is a delusion like a like something that's not real like it's not like a thing it's not it's a um, you you feel strongly about this uh you know that this project you're working on is going good and and uh but it's like i think you know or when you look at certain things it's like these like when you look at something authentically, it's like, it's almost like a slap in the face. It's like a truth. It's like authenticity is a little bit bitter, right? Oh, that's it's very like, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. If you ever go to like, uh, weddings, they do this thing where they, uh, sometimes they'll, they'll give out like little, like a bag of almonds and they're like candy co color. Uh, when you start going to weddings and stuff, you'll see. When your friends get married yeah, and stuff, I've only been to like Indian weddings, which are very oh really? So <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to an Indian wedding too, and uh, yeah, I was like, they were like, we have to wait for the auspicious hour, and we're like, okay. But it was like, uh, this is also in uh, in Canada, and it was like, I'm not even joking, like minus thirty degrees outside. And we were like, okay, well, I guess we got to stay in here then. <laughs> we're like waiting for the thing, but it was awesome. Uh, but some, you know, like the, it's kind of like a. I guess sure it's going to be like the western wedding style uh but um there's a whole bunch of like little accoutrements and tchotchke things that you can get with your wedding stuff one of them is like a bag of almonds and they're candy co co coated almonds and the idea is that some almonds are you know good and sweet and kind of like nutty and then some are bitter and so uh the reality it's like it's like the reality of 
of a wedding, of getting married, of marriage, is that there's going to be some good things and there's going to be some bad things. And that's usually how the world like works when it becomes a, like when there's like a truth to something, right? So um, I think Pixar does a pretty good job of striving for authentic ideas um, in the lines of uh, you're, you know, well, you'll usually have a couple values in a movie and like, you know, something over here, something over here. And then the, the, but the answer at the end is kind of like the synthesis of these ideas where they come together. And, um, you know, when you watch a movie and you're crying for the character, but you're like, <laughs> yeah, you're doing it. Awesome. You know, and like, and like, yes, yeah, so we're rooting for you. You know, like that's when you, find um uh a sweet spot like a like you're you're looking for that and that's usually where authentic where i kind of like find authenticity sincerity could be just really much like you know it's almost like i sincerely believe in like the crazy happy ending of these stories uh maybe like a kind of like a once about a time that ends very happily um uh, but uh i think sometimes you know uh did you watch i don't want to spoil anything but did you watch coco and, and yeah, things I like did. that so yeah. i'll put a just a spoiler for anybody else yeah, skip, yeah. skip ahead like i don't know a minute or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think well anyways i just i think those movies you know you have you have music on this side and you have family on this side and you look at these things and you think what do I get from family? Well, I get the acceptance of my parents and you get the, um, uh, like the, my, my entire life, my, like I get the family, you know, I, I get all the comforts of everyone that I love all around me and I get to, uh, but maybe it's there bad stuff about it. Like, Oh, I get to take over the, the family business. Uh, you know, maybe I'm not into that as much, right. Music, all well, music is, you know, I can do all this awesome, musical playing i can do all this great um uh awesome entertaining for people and i'll be a star and people will really look up to me you know but at this but at the same time my family doesn't really enjoy it and everyone all my heroes are kind of like alone and they're like kind of like not they don't have their family backing right so you have these two things right and so usually what you're doing is you're putting things in between these two worlds and um how are we re going to reconcile these things and so uh you know just similar to marriage you know you got all the good things you got like romantic dates and people that could cook for you and people that will be there for you if you're sick or um you know help you take care of the house help you raise children pay for you know your cars and and all those things and, and go on vacations with you and and just kind of like be there all the time to discuss things and then you know someone who's messy or you know nagging or you know there's like those you have to reconcile these kind of like these two sides of this thing into into one candy coated bitter almond right and so you're looking for that kind of and that's like for me it's kind of like this that's that's what kind of authenticity means like you want to be authentic you want to be truthful where it's like you know you admit the good but you also admit the bad that's very good that's like i love that because a lot of people uh fall into that trap of you know lying to yourself like how we were talking about like once i get into cal arts my path yeah. is set in life and I'll never be able to worry about a single thing. Right, right. <laughs> but right. Th that's a very healthy way of saying, um, yeah, there's good, there's bad. But yeah. Elizabeth Gilbert also talks about this. Every profession, every life decision has some sort of, um, she calls it, I, I can't curse on this because it's family friendly. But let's just say it's a shoot sandwich. But, <laughs> but yeah, everything has bad parts of it. So it's just like, which ones can you tolerate? Right. How much can you have? That's very, right. very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Something that would be a, it's in, insane negative to me won't be a negative to you and vice versa, right? Yeah, yeah definitely. 
um, one thing that I really, really love about you, and this is kind of what we already talked about, you openly teach other people, like, everything that you learn, like, at Lightbox, you're helping people, what motivates yeah. you to continue, and, like, you know, being on this yeah. interview, and yeah, helping, yeah. The, <laughs> that's, the, like, awesome. I think because the minute you asked me questions that were all these really great questions, uh, I have to answer them. And so now I have to think about all the things that I say and do and how I act and how I perceive myself. All those things are now questioned, right? And so that's also healthy for me. And so it's always been great to for me to try to describe uh, things to other people, right? Like uh, there's some aspects of like, I was just working on this kind of like little it, like tutorial on like how to use like some subjective camera work, right? Which means like filming everything from this character's point of view. And I thought I had like a really good, uh, you know, layout and I, I um, it's very clear. I thought it was, very, you know, very logical, clear and all that stuff. And it's just like right down the line. And it's great. And I showed it to one of my friends. And he's all boring. And I was like, oh, you're right. It's not funny or like entertaining. And it could be. And then people would be like more into it. So, you know, I, I, I think like uh, <laughs> I, I think you just learn. Like I'm interested in learning myself. Right. And I think you learn a lot by trying to describe to other people what you've kind of like picked up from experience or muscle memory things like that right? oh definitely that definitely shows i remember your talk from lightbox it was like literally like mind-blowing it was really really fantastic oh great i'm glad you liked it yeah see i i'm glad some people like it there you go other people are just like you could just see them like uh, yeah, I actually have my sketchbook from that day. I was looking back at it. This guy was blocking the screen and I couldn't see. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. But yeah, and he was... hated it. That guy hated it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, hey, whatever. <laughs> um, what I help... think when, I, when, when, we're t when we're talking about those things, though, um, the thing that I found that helps the most or the thing that connects with people the most is the emotional stuff. So if you can talk about the emotional things, uh, sure. Like, oh, do you know about filmmaking? Do you know about composition? And these rules and Fibonacci's sequence and, you know, all this stuff. And, and you can talk about those like really, really kind of like strict rules on uh, camera or that type of stuff. But uh, what you're really looking for is an emotional feeling from that stuff. And so when, you know, the best talks that you, if someone goes and they talk about making, like Finding Dory, the best talks are the ones about talking about the emotional aspects that went into it um, and and how you can get that emotion into your into your story and not necessarily all the technical stuff because the technical stuff right kind of a little boring I it's very it's very useful it's essential to help you to get to the emotional aspect but the emotional aspect is what you're always aiming for and so you're not aiming for technically completely 100% accurate stuff you're aiming for like the emotional part and so in those talks all I'm saying is that uh uh the more I edit them like it changes all the time right I you're constantly editing stuff like oh how could this be better is this boring um and I think what it is is you just want to get like an emotional reaction out of people and so maybe I think the one that you were at uh we drew like I was like all right we're gonna draw the screen or whatever mm -hmm. and usually that scares the crap out of people and it's great oh my gosh I was terrified <laughs> like with the chisel tips you just handed us and we're like I'm not prepared for this I didn't do my warm-ups I did yeah, not expect exactly exactly and I think that what's hilarious is that because we're all animators and we're all the same uh like like that we have all that shared in common we all immediately without question Oh, well, then I, oh, shoot, I get a better, no one, no one is like, I'm not drawing that. You know, like, no, every, every single person is like, oh, I got to draw. And so it's really entertaining to watch, you know, but also I think it gets an emotional drive and there, and now you're, you're drawing and you're like, oh, I better do a, a good drawing. And it's like, oh, but I only gave you 30 seconds, you know? And so uh, I think that part of it is like, uh, I like that part, all right? It kind of gets you like riled up a little bit. And so. Um, I kind of like wanted to like lean more into that. If I talk, if I talk about uh, like the technical aspects of why you would cut from this to this to this, uh, I think a lot of people are like, you know, 
like they just they're not as because there's no uh visceral reaction to that oh right? definitely and another thing that i wanted to say like uh you made us do all those drawings like the reverse storyboarding thing yeah. i met someone else uh i met another professional artist during that time who asked to look at my a sketchbook and that was like the last page and they thought like a professional person did them but if they ended up being like i'm very proud of i was like at that time this is three years ago three yeah. years ago yeah maybe yeah gosh, oh my god right. <laughs> yeah. but yeah they ended up being like some of my favorite things that i did that year oh wow um, yeah i love yeah. that spontaneity um yeah. so you worked in the animation industry for like 16 ish year yeah it's like in pixar and like blue sky what right. a lot of young artists like me wonder we already talked about this but if that feeling Perfect. of i'll probably hopefully i have a better answer this time <laughs> of being good enough ever goes away do you feel yeah. like you're ever good enough like in the context of Never. mastering the technical aspects and the draftsmanship versus like how you were talking about the story and the feeling you have it's a to big question. Sorry. Yeah, it's a, it, no, it's great. It's great. I think you have to, you have to, um, again, you have to get your hands dirty, and you have to be confident because there's no, uh, there's no, no two assignments are ever really the same in animation, which is, again, terrifying and amazing at the same time right so you always have like something to learn something to look at something to think about um and so it's important to kind of like go into something with like an open mind and i'm not going to worry too much about this um i always encourage people to just like work however way, which way you want almost every story artist that works at pixar that works at blue sky their their initial stages of working are all different some people draw on little post-its and some people draw on paper without any frames around stuff and some people just write ideas down in a book for like hours on end and some people draw little thumbnails on the script itself and some people go right into storyboarding and like you just have like whatever you you have to like you have to relieve yourself in those initial stages of 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 too like trying too many things like work in the medium that feels really good to you work in the in the style work in the way that feels good to you because that's like if you have too many things that you're like okay i'm gonna try to now draw with sharpie which i normally don't do and i'm gonna try to draw on post-its which i normally don't do uh i usually draw my sketchbook i draw i'm gonna draw on post-its and and if you have too many like hangups of like trying to do too many things you're you're gonna have a hard time focusing on that like the real aspect of it which is like the storytelling the emotional aspect of it right so you want to like in those in early stages like relieve yourself of that of that thing. and that's so that's what i do in those early stages i usually do little thumbnails i know i'm not i'm wasting i'll have to redraw them i'm kind of wasting time sure can it be called a waste of time? Who knows? I mean, it's art, right? So like, it's not really, right? And so I thumbnail, I just think about like the, my ideas and just having fun, just relaxing. Oh, I can just throw these ideas away if I want to. They're just little drawings. Oh yeah, I'll throw that away. Oh, I'll just do another drawing. Oh, isn't that funny? Maybe I'll draw the character like this for a while. That's weird. And then, you know, like you, you have like, um, it's kind of like this, that's like the art side of it. And then at a certain point you do like take that and then you're like, okay, now that I've done that thinking, like I'm going to turn off that part of my brain and I'm going to turn on this part of the brain. It's, it's been described as being like in storyboarding, there's like 12 balls to juggle, but you can only juggle like five. And so every time you must choose which five you're going to do, like, it, you know, is this scene very heavy on, uh, lighting yeah okay well then maybe i'll do a little bit of like lighting aspects in here oh is this a funny scene okay well maybe i'll just do like kind of like derpy drawings and like kind of like goofy drawings oh is this scene uh like heavy on acting okay well then i'm gonna do more acting but i'm not gonna shade anything in because i i want to just focus more on the acting right so like those are kind of like the balls that you're juggling at any given time but you can't juggle them all and so a lot of people try to juggle them all right right away and it's just like bruh you just fumble it all and you don't want to work on it so you put it off you know so i think 
you know, you really have to kind of like go into it as being like, okay, what's, you know, what's the point of the scene? Who am I? Cause I'm working on this scene. And so I'm going to do the right thing for myself to make myself feel comfortable in working on this scene. Does that make that sense? That is, yeah, that is like such, uh, I'm relieved to hear that advice because <laughs> like, it's very like comforting and nice because I was studying, um, bunch of storyboard artists from like infinity train and owl house yeah and i was trying to figure out how they do it and you're totally right there's so yeah. many different processes and i thought yeah. that they were all right but right. you're so right it depends that yeah. is very good advice that's yeah. awesome <laughs> yeah it's it's what it's it's wild you'll not find two story artists that work the same way yeah it's, it's do you wild. feel like you ever do you ever do you burn out faster? Because it seems like you put so much of yourself into your work and then doing that like, you know, yeah. five times a week, like every day. Yeah, I think, I mean, sometimes there's ebbs and flows, right? So sometimes like you're you're into it. I totally see the scene in my head. I need to get this out. I, I you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it out as fast as I can. I'm gonna do a great job. And so I'm uh, not really, I'm feeling, I, you know, I, I'm a little, uh, I don't have as much energy to put into the creative aspect of this. Just being honest with yourself like that is is helpful. Uh, but it's a job, so like you know, in some of those things, you kind of just have to push through and 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 do the drawings. But um, again, like all you, the thing that makes it easy for you is just to remove all the problems or any like strict things that you're putting on yourself. Just if if you feel overwhelmed, just do one thing at a time. I don't even know what this character looks like. Oh, okay, well then why don't you just, you know, just draw the character in your sketchbook for a little while and just kind of play with the idea of the design and stuff like that. Have fun, you know, like, well, what kind of character are they? Are they like, are they a bookworm? Okay, well, maybe they're sitting on a bunch of books and maybe they always have a book with them. Maybe their nose is in a book this whole scene and, you know, they're not watching where they're going. They're one of those crazy people that tries to read and walk at the same time, which is ridiculous. Um, and uh, uh, I, I saw <laughs> we saw this woman walking at the park the other day, and she had a book, and she was walking like, I'm like oh, "You're wow. not reading." <laughs> sit down, fake fan, and, <laughs> and you're not walking well. You need to sit down and read, and then go take a walk. You know, but oh uh, my god, that's hilarious. Yeah, but something you know, like uh, you know. Anyways, oh, how about that? Like there, now, like maybe I put this character and they're like trying to read and walk and they smack into stuff and someone's like, dude, you need to sit down and read, you know? So you, uh, I think just kind of like letting yourself like into that kind of like creative space really does solve a lot of problems for you. I think um, the burnout really is kind of like the physical aspect of creating the storyboard sometimes and people's hands get hurt, things like that. So you gotta be careful about, you know, having like a desk that's the right, space and stuff it had uh one uh guy that i was working with had uh he just he was just like working he was like sitting on a box or like a really crappy chair and um it's like you know like i i promise you it's totally worth it to get a good chair at least mm -hmm. a decent chair like whatever 100 bucks or two you know 200 bucks maybe like you know like but i think and a, and a nice decent desk to like set yourself up for success um those you know it's not like photography you don't need a full like rendering studio or anything like that so a lot of the material that we have to buy in as storyboard artists is not that expensive um so in the in the grand scheme of things um so invest in in the right in the right stuff uh early on to kind of like give yourself that success so you don't burn out that's smart so uh you were talking about the technical stuff versus the emotion which drives you mm -hmm. um what do you feel is the most important to work on especially for i don't know young little baby storyboard artists or uh -huh. something this is yeah. the only technical art related thing i will ever ask <laughs> is this technical oh so I you guess want so. i try not to ask like typical like oh my god teach me how to draw questions because i know right. people get tired of that so yeah. this is yeah. the only thing sure Sure. Okay. I'll keep it real general because get digging into anything is like to, it's just not going to be as helpful, but I would say, um, if you want to work in stuff that similar to Pixar or blue sky or, um, you know, Disney movies, things like this, 
Um, it's a lot of character. Uh, and so focus on like your characters. And a lot of times in drawing, uh, you might have, we, you might remember this, but it's, it's really just drawing the eyes and the silhouette. The eyes are what people look for. People look for uh, eyes and faces in almost everything. If you, you know, they took a bunch of pictures of the, of Mars early on, one of the satellites that was passing by, this is, you know, 40 years ago, 50 years ago. And uh, they took a bunch of pictures of the, of Mars and they saw a shadow and it was a sh and it looked like a face. It was like a, mo it was like a gigantic face that was carved into Mars. And people lost their minds because they're like, Oh, there's a, there's Martians down there and they have a big, you know, monument that they made of a face that looks kind of like an alien, but kind of like human and, uh, and, and blah, blah, blah. And it, people like lost their minds about it. But as people, we're trained to look for that. So we're looking for faces. We're looking at faces, you know, um, the most compelling thing for us, the most kind of like scary thing for us is a human face. But at the same, you know, that's why you can watch like um, CG that's really close or like a, a like a, a robot that looks really, really close to being a person, but it's not because you can tell you can tell these little micro movements because you are as a human being are an expert at looking at other people's faces. Oh, and definitely. So... My uh, middle school <laughs> science teacher used to be she used to watch uh ghost documentaries you know like oh, yeah. those kind of things just yeah. because it, the human ability to stop faces is so like in tune Bye. 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 Bye.